Hi guys! In this video, we're gonna talk about solids of revolution, but instead of rotating around the x-axis, we're gonna rotate around the y-axis. So let's take a look at an example. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the area bounded by y is equal to x to the power of 3. That's gonna be the blue function right here. And y is equal to 8, which is the pink function. And x is equal to 0. And we rotate the area around the y-axis. And so if we take the area between these curves and we rotate it around the y-axis, what kind of three-dimensional object are we going to get? Well, we're going to get something like this. And this is the solid that we want to find the volume of. So to find the volume, we need to write down the volume formula, which is V is equal to the integral from a to b of a of y dy. And the reason that we are integrating with respect to y is because the cross section, which is a circle, is sitting on the y axis, which makes it easier to integrate with respect to y. And the limit from a to b is simply from 0 to 8. So we can fix that. So the limit is just from 0 to 8. The next step is to find the area. And so we know that the area is the cross section, which is a circle. And the area of a circle is the same as pi times the radius to the power of 2. And how do we find the radius? Well, let me show you how to do that. So first of all, we know that the distance from the center to the cross section is y. We can simply call that y. And we also know that the distance from the y-axis, so from here, until it touches the function, which is there, is x. So we know that's x. Which means that the radius has to be equal to x. So let me rewrite this. This is the same as pi times the radius, which is just x, to the power of 2. So to the power of 2. And we need to rewrite this in terms of y, because we're integrating with respect to y. And so we know that this function is the same as y is equal to x to the power of 3, which means x is the same as y to the power of 1 third. So this is the same as pi times y to the power of 1 third to the power of 2, which is simply pi times y to the power of two-thirds. So we successfully found the area formula, and it's time to put it back into our integral. The last step is to evaluate this integral, which will basically give you the volume of this solid. So the first thing that we notice is that pi is a constant. So we can just bring it outside of the integral. So this is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 8, of y to the power of 2 thirds dy, which is the same as pi times the antiderivative of y to the power of 2 thirds. So first of all, this is going to be y to the power of 5 thirds. And then you have to divide by the exponent, which will basically give you 3 over 5 right here. And don't forget the boundaries. You have to do it from 0 to 8. So the top one will be 8. The bottom will be 0. So the next step is to substitute in these limits. And if you do that, we're going to get pi times 3 over 5 times 8 to the power of 5 over 3 minus 3 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5 over 3. This is going to be the same as pi times 3 over 5 times 32. So if you evaluate 8 to the power of 5 over 3, you're going to get 32. And this will simply be 0, so minus 0 right here. And finally, this is pi times 96 over 5. And the answer will simply be 96 divided by 5 pi. So this right here, this number right here, represents the volume of this solid. 
So let's go ahead and do the next problem. Okay, next problem. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the area between y is equal to x to the power of one third. That's going to be the green curve right here. And y is equal to x squared, which is the red function, around the y axis. So imagine if you take the area between these two curves and then you rotate it around the y axis, what kind of three dimensional object are we going to get? Well, we're going to get something like this. As you can see, our solid is going to look like this, and the volume of this solid is the same as the volume of the outside function, and the outside function is y is equal to x squared, minus the volume of the inner function, so y is equal to x to the power of one-third. So let me repeat that. The volume of our solid is the same as the volume of the outside function minus the volume of the inner function. So we know that the volume formula is just the integral from a to b, and in this case, it's going to be 0 to 1, so this is 0, this is 1, of a of y dy, where a of y is the area of the circular cross-section. How about the volume of the inner function? Well, it's going to be the integral from a to b, it's 0 to 1, of a of y dy. The next step is to find the area formula. So for this area, we know that the area is going to be pi times the radius to the power of 2, because that's the area formula for a circle. And so we also know that the distance from the center to the cross-section is y. We can call that y. And so the distance from the y-axis until it reaches the outer edge of the function, which is here. So this distance right here is x. And since y is the same as x to the power of 2, we solve it, we solve for x, and we're going to get x is equal to y to the power of 1 half. And so the radius, let me rewrite this, this is equal to pi times x to the power of 2. And x is simply y to the power of 1 half. So this is the same as pi times y to the power of 1 half to the power of 2, which is equal to pi times y. Now let's put this back into our integral. Now the area of the blue circular section is also a circle, so that's going to be the same as pi times the radius to the power of 2. And again, we know that the distance from the center to the cross section, so this distance right here, is going to be y. So that distance is y, and the distance between the y-axis until it reaches the edge of the function, so this distance, it's going to be x. So if we solve this, we're going to get x is equal to y to the power of 3. So let's rewrite this function. We're going to get pi times x to the power of 2. And since x is just y to the power of 3, we're going to get pi times y to the power of 3 to the power of 2. And this is simply equal to pi times y to the power of 6. So let's go ahead and put this back into our integral right here. We are so close to finishing. So since both of these integrals have the same boundaries, we can just smash them together into one integral, and that's going to simplify a lot of things. So the volume of the solid is the same as the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times y minus this pi times y to the power of 6 dy. And again, since pi is just a number, we can bring it outside of the integral. So this is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y minus y to the power of 6 dy. This right here 
is the same as pi times the antiderivative of y, which is just 1 over 2 times y to the power of 2, minus the antiderivative of y to the power of 6, that's just 1 over 7 times y to the power of 7. And don't forget the boundaries that goes from 0 to 1. Now, this is the same as pi times 1 over 2 times 1 to the power of 2 minus 1 over 7 times 1 to the power of 7 and minus the lower bound. So the lower bound will simply be 1 over 2 times 0 to the power of 2 minus 1 over 7 times 0 to the power of 7. And we're going to go ahead and close off the bracket right here. So the next step is simplifying the whole thing. So pi times 1 over 2 minus 1 over 7. And we know that this whole thing right here, that whole expression is just going to be 0. So this is equal to pi times 7 over 14 minus 2 over 14. And the answer will simply be 5 times pi over 14. So this number right here, so let me circle it, this number right here represents the volume of our solid.